My guest had terminal brain cancer with only three days to live. He was instantly healed when a supernatural force pushed him to the ground. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Now, I'm going to really stretch you. My guest, Billy Burke, I have got medical documentation of someone that had a stomach surgically removed and they now have a stomach, of uh, someone that was given, look, look, look at this documentation, a new lung. Uh, Billy Burke, I, I am in awe of these creative miracles, and, and it's, it's not just those two. I mean, you, you have gone into a zone of creative miracles, but I want to find out a bit about you. Sure. Uh, in fact, before we, we started this show, I was saying the hero of your life has to be your grandmother. She, yes. Tell me why. Well, my grandmother really was the only member in our family that was exposed to the supernatural. You know, she was a avid Catherine Coleman listener every, you know, every day on the radio. I grew up in Pittsburgh, PA, and so she was exposed to the early days of Oral Roberts, Catherine Coleman. Well, I'm so glad she was because at age nine, according to my yeah, notes, yeah. you had terminal brain cancer. Yes, I did. And uh, yeah. you, you had like a few days to live? Three days. Three days. I was, in, I was in a hospital in Pittsburgh, three days to live, and they had me dismissed against doctor's wishes to take me to a Catherine Coleman meeting in the... Uh, but your grandmother got you dismissed a little earlier. About, and about she five did days. something for you yeah. that yeah. everyone should have a grandmother it's, like Billy Burke I think What did she do? I think it's the secret to a miracle. Hmm. I think it's one of the main, major secrets to a miracle is because we know how to prepare for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for fishing, for weddings, for funerals. We can even prepare for church. But how do you get ready to receive? If you're blind, how do you get ready to receive? How do you prepare? To receive a miracle and I was dismissed about a week early and from Monday to Thursday the meeting was on a Friday morning from Monday to Thursday my grandmother every moment that she got now I had a patch over my eye but well, why'd you have a patch over my your vision eye? was double a hmm. double vision uh, my uh, my motor skills were pretty deteriorated my, my, I had lumps on my back cancer lumps all over my back Th did you know you were going to die in three days yeah, yeah, they prepared me, but as much as they could. So how did you handle it when your grandmother kept saying to when you? When she touches you. That's what she said, when she touches you. And here I am home at my house in, in Greensburg, PA. Over and over again. His every chance, every chance she would get. When that woman, that's Catherine Coleman, yeah. touches you, yeah. did she say, you will be healed? You'll be healed. She, when she touches you, when she touches you, when she touches you. So that by the time Friday morning we're driving down to the meeting and she's on that same thing, when she touches you. And I didn't know what she was doing then, I do now. Because I didn't know how to prepare for that. You know, and most people walk into a service, even a miracle service, and they're not prepared for it. You know, and um, so we were in the balcony and I was watching all of that through one eye. And was, I was amazed at what I was seeing. I thought it was, this is like a show. And what, the best show in town? Best show in town. And all of a sudden, Catherine pointed to me and she said, you get down here, he, you're being healed of all the cancer. How'd you know it was you? There were a lot of people there. There was a, about 2,000 people. Yeah. How'd you know it was you? It's just, I don't know. It just felt like her finger touched my nose. Okay. And she said, get down here. And I said, no. No? I said, You're no. dying, yeah. Billy. Yeah, I know. And, Come to your senses. And she said, I said, get down here. And I said, no, the second time. And the third time, she said, ushers, get them down here. So she sent two ushers up into the balcony to get me and brought me down to stand you know, next to her. And that's whenever she began to talk and ask me my name. And uh, she said, do you believe? She said, do you believe? And I said, yeah, I said, I believe. And she turned around to walk away. And I remember taking a sigh of relief thinking, well, I passed the test. And she spun around and she said, I said, do you believe? 
And I mean, it's just something. Just and Now I know what that something was. It was the presence of the Holy Spirit. Went all through me. And uh, as her hand was reaching to my head, mm -hmm. I could hear my grandmother's voice. My grandma said, when she touches you, when she touches you, when she touches you, here comes this hand, when she touches you, when she touches you. So my grandmother's words had prepared me for that Kairos moment. That, that overpowered every unbelief, everything, that's all you heard right. inside of your head. A God-breathed word, you know, a word fitly spoken, when she touches you. Again, I didn't know at that time, as I would know now, preparing people to receive the so miracles. So she, she touches you, what, to the best of your memory, oh, I mean, you, you, you were just, what, nine oh, years but old? but it's like yesterday. But wh what happened to oh, you when like she yesterday. touched you? It was like yesterday. It was, it was an incredible presence, power, titillating, uh, riveting. I you, couldn't, you, you said the power was so strong, three rows of four, people? Four, four rows, rows, four rows, rows fell. Four rows what, fell. What happened? What do you mean fell? They fell. They Out fell. of their chairs? They fell. Uh, they, it was all pews, so they fell back in their pews. Huh. Some were laying across their pews. I was laying on a marble floor, pinned like this. I was like groggy. I was like, as we would call today, drunken spirits. And I remember I tried to move my hand. I tried to get up and I couldn't move anything. And I thought I died. I, th I actually <laughs> thought that I died. And I thought that strange lady came with me because she was standing over me saying, oh, the faith in this boy, the faith in this boy. And no, yeah. it wasn't. It was the faith in your grandmother that put her <laughs> faith inside of you. Let's give credit to where credit's I, I, due. I concur. I concur. I concur. In, in other words, the presence of God was so strong on him, totally healed, by the way, obviously. Yeah. When I got up, she said, get that patch off your eye. I didn't even realize that my, my uh, legs were not paralyzed. My, I could move my leg. I didn't even realize that the pain was gone. I was so used to being that way. And she said, get that patch off your eye. I said, oh, no, no. And she said, get that patch off your eye, or I'm taking it off your eye. She and, had, we, we Jewish oh, people have a word, it's called chutzpah, nerve. She that had, woman had chutzpah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just, I picked the patch up. I didn't take it off. I picked it up, and my eyes had straightened back out again. And, of course, then uh, the cancer was completely gone. I'd gone back for tests. And, but, but what's so amazing to me, Billy, it is the presence of of healing was so strong yeah. on him that if you could get under that fountain of healing, and I believe yes. when you come back, Billy is going to pray for you. And I believe that that fountain is, have you seen many people with cancer healed that oh, you've prayed for? Many, 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 many. And guess what? God's not limited to cancer. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! Last year, God told me to host a supernatural tour to Israel. I invited Israeli and American friends who move in the miraculous to join us. The tour was such a spiritual highlight, we're going to do another one this year in Jerusalem. Our Israeli adventure is over the Thanksgiving holiday, so you would not have to take as much vacation time from work. And we've purposely kept this top quality tour under $3,000, and that includes all taxes and tips. Let me show you the most amazing country on earth and see this incredible land through the eyes of Jewish believers in Jesus. Call now for a free brochure at 1-800-959-1062 or visit our website at sidroth.org. Please specify the Sid Roth Israel Tour when you call. Come experience God's presence like never before. We now return to It's Supernatural! One thing that was left out when I was interviewing Billy Burke about his marvelous healing under the Catherine Coleman ministry is many years later, he bumped into an usher that was there. You know, he's just a young kid. He didn't remember everything. And the usher said that Catherine said to him, you will do the same thing that I am doing. And one day, Billy has been moving in miracles and he gets a phone call and a, a message, a voice message. And the message says, hey, hot shot, if you've really got the goods, why don't you go 
to the school for the uh, blind. Blind. Why don't you go for the, to the school for the blind and just clear them out? What effect did that have on you? Initially, I, I thought, I dismissed it. I thought, well, that's just somebody that's deranged or angry or jealous or they don't understand. But the more that I, I thought about that voice, because up until that time, I hadn't seen any blind people healed. We've seen a lot of people deaf, a lot of people paralyzed, a lot of cancer people healed, but hadn't seen a lot of people that were blind, hadn't seen any, put it that way, hadn't seen any. And there was something riveting about that. And I went over and sat down at my desk and I said, you know, Lord, I said, I don't like the spirit that was said. It was very condemning, very judgmental. I said, but there's a ring of truth in that. And I picked, put my hands up, I began to cry. I said, Lord, I, I need to see some people that, that are blind, healed. I said, I, uh, if I'm going to represent you out here fully, then I, I want to be able to fully say that I've seen everything that there is to see. I'm asking you for more. And I just spent time in that presence crying out to him. I believe in crying out to him. And uh, it was a week after that. What, what, what exactly? Tell me some words you were crying out. Take it back to that time. What would you Cry out one thing you cried out at that time. Master, I need more of your presence. I call him Master. Master, I need more of your presence in these meetings. I need to see more tangible, more glory. But, need... but there was almost a, a, a desperation yes. in, that, in that cry. That's what I'm catching. Yeah. In that crying out, he was desperate for more of God, like some of you are right now. Hungry, desperate, and that cry. I mean, it's hard to imitate that cry because I'm not feeling now what I felt then, but. That, that, that importance, that need of the moment. And for all of you that are watching out there, for wherever you are, don't ever think you have to be at more, more educated than what you are. Maybe you don't know the Bible like you think you should, or you're not a church goer, or uh, you don't go to church at all. Maybe you're not even a Christian today, but you have a cry. Every one of us have a cry locked up in here. Bartimaeus cried out. He didn't even know the Lord. He cried out, and you have a cry, and if you can just get vertical and look up and begin to cry, he will hear you. He okay, will hear you. so Billy cried out his next meeting. Would you believe the first person yeah. that he's going to pray for is blind? <laughs> what went through your mind at that point? I was amazed. Was it, I was out in California visiting a place called Melody Land with Dr. Wilkerson, and he had asked me to come up, and he said, you take one end of the... Uh, it was about a thousand people at the altar. He said, you take one end and I'll take another end. And the first person that they brought to me was a blind man. And uh, I just said, oh my, because I had remembered a week prior, I'd cried out. And Sid, it was amazing. I just put my hands up on his eyes and his eyes just opened right up. He began to, oh my God, I can see. My God, I can see. Come on, watch, 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 watch. I can see. What? I can see that. And so I yelled over across the stage. I said, Pastor Wilkerson, this man got his eyesight. And he yelled back. He said, I'm glad because I got another one for you. Get over here. <laughs> so I ran over on the other side of the stage. And here's a woman standing there. You and she was blind see. and, and like, touched her eyes. And her right eyes now. came open. Yes. That's going to change tonight. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we give. Oh, dear Jesus. It's clear. <laughs> And so, and was, since that point, have many more blind people gotten their sight? Oh, amazing! Since that point, it kind of opened up even a greater level of miracles. For a great, yeah, a greater realm, you know, because our faith grows. Our faith is progressive, and and oftentimes, you know, our faith follows knowledge. Our faith. Now, did follows you want to see a blind person get their sight back? Let's take a look at this person right now. Ten years blind. How did she go blind? She, there was an accident. She was poked in the eye. She got poked in the eye. Is her eye, everything is still there? Everything is still in, in her brain. The part of the brain that controls the eye it doesn't work anymore. Uh huh. So even if they did surgery, she wouldn't. We had be able to we see had it. a little boy that was healed that didn't have the optic nerve. You don't need all the components. That's for normal people. <laughs> only only God can make her see. Can't you see out of that eye? Can you see anything at all? Can you see out of this eye? How many fingers do I have? One. How many fingers over here? You can't see anything. Close your eyes, sweetheart. Close your eyes. Hallelujah. Oh, we give mighty Jesus praise. Do you believe Jesus can heal your eyes? He's touching you. He's touching you. By the Holy Ghost. 